shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what he said was, if we do not keep the commandments of God, we're going to be a cursed nation. And now this is how we're a cursed nation right here. Look at how we're living. It's a beautiful day outside, and not a whole bunch of nothing is going on here. Everybody just sitting down, got nothing to do, living in the worst parts. My brother, my brother, what's your name? Good. All right, cool. You said good. Good. All right. So uh, let me let me ask you this. Look at this trial. Look at this sign right here. You got a flyer. Look on the back of that flyer. What would your father be according to that right here? If you look at these twelve things. What would your father be? Would he be a so-called African American or a Haitian, a, a West Indian? American black. So, according to the Bible, you would be from the tribe of Judah. All right? And what's so special about that is, one, you're from the nation of Israel, which is God's chosen people. Another thing is, that same tribe that you come from is where Jesus Christ came from. The same tribe that he came from is what you descend from. Meaning that blood that ran through his body is now running through yours. Because this book is, this, we read the Bible, all right? This is about history. It's a history book for a certain people. The Bible is not for everybody. Have you ever heard that before? You did? Good, so you know. Where are we supposed to be? There you go. So I'm going to get back to this point. Read verse 15 again. No, no, go ahead, go to the curses. Go to 32. So what we're reading... Listen, do me a favor. Go get your family. Bring your family and learn the history according to the Bible because nowhere else will you find where we're supposed to be because we're taught in this world that we're supposed to be equal. But you know that, that all the other nations don't see us as equal. We're, we're, be, we're below everybody. Come learn your history according to the Bible. This is the gospel. This is the gospel that Christ was preaching. Christ came to save the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel only. Get Acts chapter 5 verse 29. I'm going to prove that before you go. Hold on real quick. I'm going to prove that because you think that Jesus Christ came to save everybody, correct? Right? That's what we taught. Was Christ came to save everybody down the cross and save everybody, correct? Let's see what the Bible says, all right? Acts chapter 5 verse 29. This is the book of Acts. Chapter 5 and verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We are to obey God rather than men. So we are to obey God rather than men, correct? So this is the Bible. So this is God's word. Whatever's in this book, we're going to follow that. We don't care what, a, what your Christian pastor says, your grandmother, my mother, father. We don't care. Whatever's in this Bible is law. Go ahead. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. So the God of our fathers, the Israelites' fathers, go ahead. Whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand. Okay, that's good. Read that part again. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel. To who? To Israel. It doesn't say to, to the whole world. Jesus Christ came to die to give repentance and salvation for the Israelites. Right. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, God is only dealing with you. He never dealt with any other nation. Right. He's only dealing with you because you're his special people. Right. And we got to come back to his laws. Like I said, bro, go get your family and learn this history. Because we were taught this Bible. We were taught that Jesus Christ was a pale man with blue eyes and long, doggy, stringy hair. And he came back like a homosexual, being all soft. Right? You've seen the pictures of the angels in the heavens with the little butt naked and touching the hand. That's homosexuality. Right. You ain't supposed to see no man naked. That's the law. So come learn your history. Go get your family. This is a beautiful thing. We're out here to preach to our people. We don't live around here. We came from a far place. We're lo well, we're located everywhere. So wherever we can pull up anywhere. We got a school in Newport News. We got a lot of brothers up here, right? you probably be close to the uh, Upper Marlboro, Maryland. That's our closest school from here. All right, but we do have a school in Newport News, okay? Anywhere else, like, if you guys go to another state, we're there. But look at that flyer. But look, check this out. Give me, um, let me show you. I'm going to so get the cursor real quick. Go back to the cursor. Get 68. Get 60. I got to get that. Now, this is one of the this is one of the main reasons that it, it, it clicked for me. Because I, I grew up in church seeing things in the Bible, and the way my church was doing it wasn't adding up. So I was lost. For, for a long time. Then I met a group of brothers on, online and I seen that they actually knew the Bible. So check this out. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt 
again. So God said if we broke his commandments, he's going to take us back into Egypt. But the word Egypt is synonymous with something. The Bible is going to explain itself. We're going to give you the definition of Egypt in the Bible. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Well, you read that one. That's good. Five, yeah, five, six, six. This is the book of Exodus, book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5 and verse 6. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Remember, he brought us out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. From the house of bondage. So the house of Egypt, the, uh, the land of Egypt to us was known as bondage. Why? Because we were slaves in that city. We built that city. Give me Exodus chapter 1, I think it's verse 10. 10, right? Yeah. Everything we were say, we're going to prove with the Bible. Because Moses in that time, he had to save Israel. So if you had to save somebody, if they're living good, or living equal to everybody, what do you need to save them for? They're living, they're okay. You have to be saved when you're in trouble. Read verse, read, yeah, start at verse 8. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 1 and verse 8. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, what? which knew not Joseph. Go ahead. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. So the, this is the Egyptians, they're saying, the king said, now, these children of Israel are more and mighty than us, right? They're rising up. Go ahead. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them. Right. Lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies. So they were scared because we was populating at an enormous rate, an alarming rate, right? So they were scared we were going to rise up against them. Keep going. And fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Get them up out of the land. Go ahead. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters. Taskmasters to, to, to and do what? Go ahead. To afflict them. To afflict us. All right? We had taskmasters. No different than today. We got the lowest wage job. We got taskmasters always to afflict us. Go ahead. With their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities. Python and Ramsey. So all those nice cities that you see in Egypt at the time, all the monuments. It said the children of Israel, which are our people who we descend from so-called blacks and Hispanics, we built that city the same way we built America, in slavery. Right. Right? So go back to um, Deuter yeah, Deuteronomy. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So remember, we're going back into Egypt if we break the commandments. And Egypt means slavery, bondage. Go ahead. With ship. But this time we're going to go on slave ships. That's what it said. What nation of people went into slavery on slave ships? Who was it? What nation of people went into slavery on slave ships? Hey, sis. What, what nation of people went into slavery on slave ships? You don't know? Did they teach you that in school? It ain't spiritual. It's history, sis. Not sure game, but sis, you don't deal with it. But what nation of people... She said, game, you game bang. <laughs> hey, since you game bang. That's the problem with our communities, though. Listen, Proverbs that's one. Proverbs 1. Yeah, Proverbs 1. That's the that's the ignorance that, we, that we're set here with. We're in the lowest parts of the communities, and we got game bangers. What do, they, what do they do for you? What do they do for our people? They destroy our neighborhoods. All right? Give me that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 10. My son... If sinners entice thee. Man, that, that, that doesn't make any sense, man. A woman game bang. What can she do? Come on, go ahead, man. Read it again. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. You hear that? That's what game bangers do. They lay privily to hurt innocent with no cause, for no reason, to rob you. Now, what sense does it make to be in a poor neighborhood to rob a poor person that's not going to go nowhere, and you're going to see that poor person the next day? Right. The ignorance of our people. And, and, and people are proud to be game bangers and, 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 and thugs and throw up the set like it's so cool. You hurting your own people, but you don't play that with the people that got power over you. Right? What is the nation? <laughs> Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with 
Roma.